All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we're going to be reviewing modern workflows with Cisneros, Bridge Digital, EMAM, and Spectra. So without any further ado, here we go. Uh, today joining us will be Ellie Garcia from Cisneros Media. Uh, she's a Chief Technology Officer there. We'll have David Miller from Empress, the Chief Operating Officer. Richie Murray, who's President and Founder of Bridge Digital. And Hossein Ziashakari, Senior VP of Biz Dev and Strategic Alliances at Spectra. For any questions, please make sure that you use the question bar that's stationed at the right-hand side of the screen docked in the webinar. Uh, we'll be answering those toward the end of the call. All right, so without any further ado, Ellie, we'd love to hear more about Cisneros Media, what you do, and what kind of uh, challenges and requirements you are faced against with your archive. Uh, thanks, Katie. Um, Cisneros Media is a division of uh, Cisneros Group. Um, we've been producing and distributing um, entertainment uh, for the past 60 years um, and have a library of about 60,000 hours of content. Um, today, what we were ch challenged with is our historical content uh, was mostly housed in, um, in a legacy archive in Venezuela. Um, we had a proprietary middleware um, with also a tape library but uh, older generation and um, you know we just required more access to our content. Uh, Self-service was something very important. We needed our, our sales team, our production teams, and even our broadcast teams to be able to access and deliver our content um, easily um, without having any you know additional as fast as possible and as low cost as possible. Um, currently, we're uh, very happy with um, the implementation of our system, and we're really looking forward um, to doing the partial file restore, which is coming in a uh, next version. Um, our cable TV team is able to um, pick their shows and, and send it to, to the head end. Our production teams are able to pick um, what they need for flashbacks or maybe even historical clips um, to make other shows. And our sales team is able to know what we have and, um, you know, set up profiles so we can deliver it consistently to our different customers. Perfect. So you worked closely with Richie at Bridge Digital to implement the solution. Um, why did you select Bridge in this instance? Well, we had um, we already had a history with with Bridge. They they'd helped us on other projects before, and um, we found them to be a good fit and somebody who, first of all, kind of knew us already and uh, listened to us and and really came up with a with a solution for what we needed. Fantastic. So, Richie, um, love to hear more about Bridge and why you recommended the solution that you did to Cisneros. Sure. Well, thank you, Katie, and thank you, Ellie. Um, Bridge Digital started in 2002 providing uh, support and implementation services uh, for companies that create uh, rich media. We were primarily involved with um, archives and uh, storage infrastructure, uh, so that was why we were a good fit uh, to work with uh, Cisneros in, in Venezuela several years ago. But as time moves forward, uh, we keep our eye on, the, on uh, what we feel is going to be the technology of the future. And then obviously we have to apply those um, technologies into someone's existing infrastructure in line with their budget. And um, obviously it helps if you already have a working relationship, uh, which we were lucky to have with Cisneros. But we also had a, a good working relationship with both um, Spectrologic and uh, Empress for EMAM. And uh, we felt that it would be a good fit based on the previous testing that we had done with both like Pearl and EMAM, and it would be a fit into the environment um, at Cisneros, which consisted of uh, a backplane of 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, a large scalable Isilon solution, and then how do we build those other components in to um, empower the speed of Black Pearl as an archive device, and also provide uh, connectivity to the uh, high bit rate and proxy data through EMAM. Fantastic. 
So now that we've heard about the whole solution, um, Dave, would love to hear more about the EMAM side of it. Great, thanks. Um, so at, at a very high level, so EMAM is a media asset management system, and so we, we give people an HTML5 for web or, or for tablet interface. But a very easy way for, that they can use all their media wherever it may be located. And then, uh, so we're going we're gonna to provide proxy copies for collaboration and sharing and all the workflows, and then we're going to manage the high res, whether it's in the archive or spinning disk or wherever it may be. And kind of four bullet points about the EMAM system. One, scalability, so we can work on uh, a small installation. And then we can scale up to meet uh, enterprise level needs by adding more servers and more components. Um, the second part is kind of interoperability. So we have a long list of our partners, and uh, we're very excited about Spectre as a long-term partner of ours. Um, but we, from our interface, we provide kind of a one-button uh, touch interface where, where we can launch all these separate uh, applications and systems. Um, third one is flexibility. So we've been in the cloud uh, for over seven years now. And so more and more customers um, are using a hybrid cloud where they mix on-premise in the cloud or a full cloud implementation. But in either case, we're very excited and continued to offer um, cloud-based workflows uh, for those customers where it fits or move into the future where they're going to be all in the cloud. Um, and the last one, security. A big part of, of every system is uh, controlling exactly who can do what with the media and uh, what exactly their permissions are and which media they can see. So that's um, very high level about our system. And then as you can see on the next slide, for customers we provide kind of a soup to nuts workflow from acquisition, organize, create, deliver, and then out to archive. Uh, some customers only use us for part of those workflows, but uh, it's all pretty much built into the system. Um, and some of the common workflows um, that are supported are on the next slide. So again, depends on the customer and uh, what the requirements are. So uh, in terms of Cisneros, uh, they have a very clear archive requirement, but they needed us for some of these other workflows. So these are all supported um, through our system. We can provide an online content library. We, produce, we uh, promote um, uh, production asset management or collaborative video editing in the system. Uh, media operations, very much where the self-service option is very important for them of uh, people need to find stuff and do things with it uh, in different formats and codecs. Uh, sales operations for a lot of customers, so sharing their media, um, marketing purposes, and finally uh, sending it to publishing and broadcast um, is the last part of the workflow. And um, we're very excited about uh, both our long-term um, spectrum and Black Pearl integration. We've been promoting it since actually before Spectre was promoting at NEB. And uh, we'll be pr promoting the next step with them. So built into our next system will be in kind of intelligent AI search. So this is really exciting for people with archive. So that allows them to um, go and use uh, intelligent uh, technologies to go <coughs> and alter those archives and add valuable metadata so they can reuse it. Uh, because it may not have been tagged well in the first place. Um, and also with our new version 5.0 coming out in AB, will be Spectre Partial Fire Restore. So we're very excited about that as well. Perfect. Fantastic. So now I'd like to bring in Hossein Ziyashakari from Spectre to talk about the integration with EMAM and how that's helping Cisneros in their everyday environment. Great. Great. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, one of the uh, things I wanted to comment is about our partnership with EMAM. They were uh, literally the first company who integrated with Black Pearl. And one of the most important things that we've done as part of all of our partnership is what we do, the certification of the uh, solution. Um, we go through a very rigorous series of tests and, and exception conditions to make sure that uh, full integration is done and you know all different workflows are fully supported. So. To, to talk about Black Pearl at the center of the whole solution from the uh, storage perspective, as uh, Richie suggested, um, is Black Pearl. So what is Black Pearl? It basically is a single, uh, uh, it's a storage platform with multiple APIs in front end that 
uh, brings multiple storage targets together. Uh, the needs could be uh, anywhere from uh, desktop systems that are used for, say, near-line storage, or it could be an archive disk, or it could be simply a disk form to basically um, retain and preserve basically mass amount of content. It could be tape for secondary operation or seamless operation for added protection or what have you. Uh, it could be um, a uh, cloud for DR purposes. Blackpool basically provide direct integration with cloud and if, if you know, for added DR availability, if you want to create content on cloud, it seamlessly does that and it ret retrieves it uh, just as seamless. Or it could be replicated across to a different site for added replication, for high availability, uh, and, and all that. So it's a very capable system. And all of these basically is front-ended with, uh, with gigabit Ethernet, 10 gigabit Ethernet, or 4D. So from regional availability, you could you could uh, place this solution, whether it is local on-prem, or you could uh, put it in different places. So um, the integration that we've done with, uh, with EMAM, is direct. The front end of Black Pearl is all based on RESTful API. What that does, it basically abstracts all the complexities typically associated with managing different tiers of storage. It raises it to a higher level. The integration becomes much, much easier. The complexities go away, and, and it basically becomes a lot more uh, uh, easier solution to deploy and, and uh, put into use. In the case of uh, Cisnero, the need was uh, basically tape. Uh, you know, depending on budget and requirement that they had, uh, they needed to create a low-cost archive uh, that was open, as Ellie suggested. So everything that we do from the standpoint of tape, we, we write, Black Pearl writes, all the assets on LTFS tape. And what we do, we also include the uh, system-level metadata uh, in conjunction with the actual asset on LTFS tape. So at any point in the future, that tape is readable by any standard uh, LTFS driver that you can from uh, that you can find from a variety of sources, be it IBM, be it uh, HP, be it Quantum, or any, or any other source. So it's very readily and easily uh, available. Now, in that case, you know, should it happen, should at some point LA will need to have greater concurrent access to assets for any reason, uh, she could very easily uh, add uh, Arctic Blue, which is um, very low cost at about 10 cents per gigabyte of, of storage subsystem. And Black Pearl basically seamlessly cr can create copies, not only to tape, but also additional copies on Arctic Blue. It is basically a change of policies that are native on Black Pearl, and it just does it seamlessly. And when there is a request for restoring a particular asset, it basically, uh, Black Pearl will get that content from the fastest storage that has available to it. In this case, it would be an Arctic Blue. And if for any reason that content is not available on Arctic Blue, then it seamlessly, without the user intervention or anything, it, it basically retrieves the content from the tape library. If at any point of time, uh, one of the things that we talked about earlier on the project that at some point they may want to be, uh, they may want to replicate the content across uh, multiple sites. In that particular case, Black Pearl natively can uh, and asynchronously can replicate files to other Black Pearls. It could be one, it could be multiple of them. In fact, that is a feature that in other projects that we've had, a lot of companies they do consolidate any number of sites to one central location. So it could be used for that as well. But the way the clients uh, are written, it is very easy to fail over from one side to the other. So if the request, if a request is made from the primary Black Pearl and the content for any reason is not available, it does seamlessly go to other sites and it actually brings the content back uh, again in a very seamless and easy fashion, completely uh, independent of any interaction with, with, with the end user or what have you. All of these are basically transferred to the application. And, and um, the other th uh, option is basically uh, cloud integration. We've done uh, full integration with Amazon and uh, Microsoft Azure. So at any point of time that uh, Cisnero would need to create a DR 
uh, for whatever business reasons they so choose to do, uh, we can again seamlessly create copies into the cloud as well too. So all of these can happen uh, live. It, it, all it is is just to change the policies per bucket, bucket being a um, logical grouping of assets, basically this on Black Pearl. And for every bucket or for every logical grouping, uh, you can create different policies to maintain and retain those assets. So what was the reason behind uh, designing a black pearl? Why did we do this? Um, the industry had gone through quite a bit of changes, as, as, you, as everybody knows. You know, everything has gone from, you know, to digital realm, and there's been a big paradigm shift, and all kinds of technologies have become available. They, they, we had a clash of, of, of business needs and technology, and that basically creates a lot of opportunities to bring much greater uh, efficiency. And everyone will have to be more efficient. They have to be more agile to, to be able to modify workflows based on business needs. So from our perspective, there were four key attributes that we focus on as design uh, or design philosophy, if you would, uh, for us. Um, ongoing value was a huge thing, and what that means basically is to bring greater value to the end users, and, and greater value relative to cost, we wanted that ratio to be fixed, meaning that the cost of solution or whatever that we provide will have to be fixed, and it has to be predictable. Where if you buy storage and you need to scale your storage, you would not have to pay additional costs, you would not have to deal with with added software layers to manage and control your assets, um, that you would have to be in control of your own assets. It, the, the assets are yours. You know you have every right to be in control of it, manage it, uh, retain it, uh, and being able to access it anytime in the future. And to, to do that, you needed a lot of you know as an end user, one needs a lot of flexibility and needed to have an openness. You you don't have to deal with proprietary. Um, subsystem or proprietary file system where you would have to rely on another application to be able to manage your content in the future. So we, we sort of did away with all of that. We wanted to make sure that this platform was purely based on standards that were available in the market, uh, whether it is by committee or whether it is by adoption. That was a, a major um, uh, design philosophy that we took. And then, of course, the overall system had to be efficient. The whole idea was about eliminating redundancies. The whole idea was about eliminating waste. So um, whether it was in terms of uh, simplicity of solution or bringing a lot of intelligence that, that you, one would use to manage different tiers of storage and make them a native part of the storage platform so you don't have to have additional servers and additional databases and HSM applications, and then you would have to pay in terms of licensing, whether it is for drives or slots or a storage that is used for nearline. Those add up quite a bit of cost. And then the more complexity that you have, the, the more difficult it becomes to manage workflows or change workflows based on business needs. So the, our whole intention was to offer a platform that would give uh, uh, options for innovation uh, to the end user in terms of their workflows and processes to manage their business and their core business. So um, when you map these two basically uh, systems or, or other uh, end user, this is basically directly what one would get. Simply by direct integration that Black Pro has with the application, in this case with Imam, uh, one no longer needs a middleware. As most of you already know, that is a major uh, issue of cost, a uh, major issue of a scale, especially when you try to scale it, where you get uh, charged um, again. Um, in terms of support, it becomes difficult. The, the other thing uh, about this whole thing was, uh, basically, as I mentioned, is the issue of cost. If you wanted to scale your storage for near line, there would be cost for it. This eliminates all of that. Uh, added the slots or drive, typically with middleware, you would get charged for it. This would completely eliminate all of that. The fact that we have the storage is directly integrated with the uh, application 
it makes the whole deployment easy. It also makes support much easier. The direct and high level integration, much, it makes it much easier to triage any issues that may come up. And you only have basically two vendors to deal with. It's really at the application level or is a storage uh, issue. So it becomes much easier to triage and jump right into them. The fact that we have, we, that the Blackpool can uh, natively manage the storage and we are tightly integrated with the storage, there's a greater degree of uh, knowledge and information that it helps us to get to the bottom much faster. Um, it simplifies the workflows. Um, Blackpool has a single portal to multiple or any number of tiers of storage. It's a single portal. It's basically a 10 gig or 40 gigabyte connection uh, into the network. All the policies are native, uh, very, very simple through UIs or through a user in a simple user interface that you can basically define for any number of groups or types of assets. Uh, one of the major points that has been basically with, with uh, long-term archive has been the issue of migration. Migration, you know, quite often is frowned upon because it is a painful process uh, and it's costly. So one of the things that we've done, we've tried to take the pain away from that whole process where it is now a native function of Black Pearl. So if you just change the policy, it's very easy with a couple of clicks. Then as new storage or tape drive is introduced behind Black Pearl, as part of this policy, it will create or replicate files to the new storage. So that sort of takes away from the pain of setting the whole migration. Uh, project. It just basically does it um, natively. Um, these days, clouds play a huge role in the industry. A lot of folks, uh, they're trying to learn all about it. Sometimes there are certain workflows that clouds may actually help. So for those cases, at any point of time that the end user would like to include cloud as part of their workflow, it's basically a seamless function. Uh, as an end user, one can basically create an account with Amazon, give us the credentials for it, and Blackpool simply uh, create content or replicate content across into uh, their account. Um, one of the biggest things about uh, Black Police also is it helps consolidate islands of storage into one uh, platform and as such having a single portal that goes to that gets distributed behind uh, the major production network it actually eliminates network congestion because you don't have files moving around from one island of storage to another. Everything happens behind the scene and behind black holes. So that makes a significant uh, 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 improvement in the overall environment. Black hole is a multi-tenant um, platform, storage platform. You can have any number of applications that share it. So in terms of, again, workflow, Having an asset that comes via one application, if credentials are given and access is given to Black Pearl, we can provide or give access to those assets to another application. So let's say if you have a production asset management and the content is created by it, and you have an application for distribution, separate applications for distribution, then as long as the access credential is given uh, to other application, we can provide access for that same asset between multiple applications. That greatly simplifies a lot of workflows we've seen this in many post and production houses. And of course, you can also, by the same token that you can share content, you can also, also isolate content between different uh, applications. So you have the full capabilities to share or isolate, whether it is logically or whether it is on different storage. So, you have, you know, as an, as for an environment, those are common scenarios and Blackboard can do those as well. And of course, what, uh, as an organization, and then you said what you benefit from is what we talked about, the openness of the overall system. Um, everything that we do is front-end RESTful API is very standard, you know, based on um, um, <clears throat> a superset of basically S3, which is uh, very heavily used uh, in cloud-based model, web-based architectural model. On the back end, everything is about LTFS. And uh, so that makes the whole system. So anytime in the future, uh, you, one would want to share or retrieve assets, even without spectral logic, the full uh, uh, access to the content is available as such. So 
Um, that basically, in a nutshell, is what Black Pearl does uh, and brings to the table. Um, so at this point, I guess we would want to open it to questions. Katie? That's right. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Oh, interesting. So I have a question here that asks, how do you manage grouping assets? Um, so, you know, the, the assets could be grouped basically uh, at the application level, you know, uh, I'm sure they will, will add some stuff to it, but at the storage level, um, Blackpool being, uh, a, a, having a web-based architectural model, we take, you know, we, we create uh, or allow for the end user to create uh, buckets, buckets being a logical entity that can have their own specific storage or they can share storage, but every bucket can have its own retention policy. So those could correlate to any sort of grouping that, that does happen at the application level, so the end users will have full flexibility to manage their assets in any sort of grouping with any different retention policies as they may require. Okay. Uh, Dave, do you have anything to add to that on how um, grouping assets is managed? Sure. Um, I mean, big big part from Emam's perspective is is we're not duplicating the media. So one copy of the media stored, uh, I mean, we can store in different locations, but we can create as many needed uh, categories and subcategories to which you sign, you know, permissions and access or projects as needed and bins. So um, you have complete flexibility on, on, on how you're, you know, creating logical groups in the system and how you're using them. And then when you go to archive or to restore, you could take individual assets, projects, categories, um, and archive or restore them all at once. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have another question here. How do you assure security of content using this platform? Um, so. From our perspective and based on the API, as contents are delivered uh, from the application to Black Pearl, there is checksum associated with blocks of storage that are, that are uh, sent or delivered to Black Pearl in flight. We, all the assets that are received at Black Pearl, we checksum them at block levels. And once we ensure that the content integrity is there, then we will uh, transfer those or create copies on them on the target storage based on the policies I said. Um, many applications, they also provide a specific checksum, a sort of hash key for, for any file. And if the application supports that, then Black Pro can also verify the checksum uh, against um, the data that is received, and once it's verified, again, we, we uh, basically create copies on the storage device. These checksum can remain in our database, and on the way back on retrieval, um, if the uh, workflow requires it, then on the way back, it, our, our restoration of the file, we re-verify against those um, uh, checksum and then deliver the file. Now, there are other things that Black Pearl can do uh, behind the scene because as an archive, a lot of these assets may sit on the storage device and not necessarily used, you know, for lengthy amounts of time. So in those cases, we have as part of what we call intelligent object management, which is the native intelligence on board Black Pearl. We uh, randomly um, and on a set of schedules go and read blocks of a storage and verify it against the checksum as they've laid down on the storage backend to make, make sure that those assets remain um, are safe in place. Um, if, if, the, if, the storage, if the content is basically on desktop system, then we have erasure coded um, uh, parodies that we verify against the content has been laid on the desktop system. So there are so many different ways that we ensure the content integrity remains over time. Uh, so we have a question on PFR. Can partial file restores, single files from a multi-file archived object, occur in Black Pearl? If so, is that functionality now available in EMAM with the new V5 release? 
um, from from blood pulse perspective, um, we have the capability to index files and provide partial file recovery. The answer is yes. If uh, one of the things that um, blood pulse does to uh, or our integration does is to uh, increase the performance of the system, which means that we may transfer a whole bunch of files, tens of thousands of files together. But yes, we can restore a single file from a whole group. We can do partial file recovery of a, per of a particular file from a whole group that has been transferred. That functionality is fully available. Um, I know that Imam is working with the uh, uh, to support PFR, and I'll let Dave comment on that. Oh, sure. Um, I mean, from our system, when you go, you, you find a particular asset by search. Um, you know, if it's in the archive, you can do a mark in, mark out, and then restore that part of the uh, file. And, and, you know, you could deliver it to where you need to do or, you know, whatever you want to do with that part of the file. But, you know, we can make a new part of that file at that point. Perfect. Okay, so that looks like that concludes the questions that we've had from the audience. Um, Richie or Ellie, do you have any closing remarks? No, thank well, you for um, um, inviting me to, to um, participate in this uh, webinar. Um, we're really happy and it really has helped us um, improve our, our efficiency. Um, I can say that the, the pay TV team is extremely happy um, to be able to just uh, get what they need and, and deliver it up. Fantastic. And Richie? Well, from, a, from an integrator's point of view, obviously it, it, it takes um, a group of people that work together and technologies that cooperate and, and we have we, we found success, success um, because of all the players mentioned including uh, Cisnera. So it, it's been it's it's been great and, and we've we've already expanded the system uh, once and it hopefully will continue to, to, to grow and provide the feature functions at a at affordable price point for Cisneros going into the future. So thanks again for including us. Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Be sure to visit both EMAM and Spectra at NEB. Booth numbers are listed up on the screen uh, for your convenience. Uh, this session has been recorded and we'll be sending that out after the webinar has ended. Um, thanks to all of the presenters and have a fantastic rest of the day.